uh, that was read from the Newsweek magazine. So it was like the magazine programmed him to say that thing. This wasn't an original thought that he had. And that's really where it started, I guess. You know, in my, like, early childhood, the concept that the people that I was dealing with were, I used the term uh, chemical robots at the time, but the, but the concept that they, they weren't actually conscious. They had these repeated behaviors that they would do over and over again. In his paper, Nick Bostrom defined a simulation of the entire mental history of mankind as an ancestor simulation when estimating the amount of computing power one might need. Does the idea of ancestor simulations suggest that we're retracing the steps of the genuine society that created the simulation? Well, they, they, that's one possibility. There could also be all kinds of variations ranging from complete fantasy worlds that bear no resemblance to anything that existed in physical reality to variations of history. Um, you know, all, all of that is conceptually possible. But an ancestor simulation that I talk about in the paper, which is, um, is to consider the type of simulation where the simulators would be creating very detailed simulations of people like their historical predecessors. Maybe not exactly the same people, but the same kind of people. Back when I was nine, nine or 10, I used to joke about with my brothers and sister that people would just go home and just like sit down and stare at walls and no one was watching. You know, they were just like, you know, go home and T-pose effectively uh, in their private spaces when they weren't seen because they would just, uh, deactivate their programming, I guess. I used to joke about that, but that idea ran with me a lot when I was older. Uh, and it kind of became a little horrifying. These people I'd be talking to, since nobody was watching, they would just, the program would stop working. <laughs> 